All right, so this is Astrox Imperium, a new update just dropped. And uh, let's see what it's about. So who am I? I'm going to be that dude. Oh, he's very, uh, very fancy looking. Let's see. I'll go with that guy. Do I want to give him anything cool? Oh, that's a fun hat. Oh god, that's weird. Okay. I love a lot of these uh, accessories. Some of them are... Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice little helmet. It's got a scar there. So there's got to be a way to keep it run, keep the game running in the background when I tab out, but I haven't figured that out. Hopefully I'll be able to figure it out at some point because uh, 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 every once in a while I'm tabbing out because I'm a little bit anxious about whether or not everything is working. And then I check and then I can't tell because everything's paused. So there's no audio. Come back in and then it's fine, but I can't see that. You know how it is. Okay, so I'm doing a sandbox here. Um... And, and I should clarify that I'm both streaming and recording uh, so that if you are watching this on YouTube, uh, it is streaming. The likelihood of me getting any actual viewers is really low, uh, which is fine. Um, but if I do and someone asks me, a, asks me a question, I might answer and I will try to remember to relay the question because I don't have any kind of fancy stuff going on with chat showing up on screen or anything. Like I said, I am not a YouTube or Twitch professional. I'm just some random person who likes to make videos of uh, various these these various games. So, all right, so we got some options here for our, uh, our starting um, faction. So we got Alpha, who are the scientists, cyber technologists, and psychics. It's an interesting combination. Uh, science sub-faction, applied science and R&D. The civil sub-faction has representatives in area of programming, entertainment, subspace, communication, diplomacy, and so on the trade barons they do trade uh financial folks banking institutions and so on commerce pirates outlaws sovereigns hmm sovereigns could be good uh they they basically just live by themselves do ingenuity and salvaging the temple people, missionaries, orthodox, labor, contractors, extractors. Ooh, yeah, I love the mining. Uh, I might do extractors. And in the sandbox, I don't know that they have significant uh, impact. They, they may affect, I think they affect the starting relations, which affects the missions and things like that. Um, so we're going to be, okay, so that's our main the faction there. And then what is our job? So. We could be a prospector. Uh, let's see. Uh, minor bonus to both mining and salvaging. Miners uh, gain bonus to mining yields. And then the salvagers, traders, transporters. So I think, yeah, and there's, I mean, there are more. Refiners, manufacturers, and so on. I think I'm going to go with prospector. That's usually my thing. We could do free play, peaceful universe, or HSE, which is the hostile space excavation uh, which is sort of a, it's not really a roguelike, but it, it is a, a progress-based uh, game mode. So I like the free play. All right, so that's our pilot details. Now we've got galaxies here. We're going to do 500 sectors because that's what I always do. Uh, because, uh, you know, why not? Go all out. And then the sector layout options are going to be linear, default linear, branches, spiral, cluster, random. Uh, we'll just go with default. We're going to show the unexplored sectors so that you'll see them in the little dots, but you just won't see the connectors. We're not going to allow warp drives. I'm not really likely to get, to get one. Uh, and they, they, well, you know, nah. Let's turn them on. Uh, just, just cause we might as well give the option, keep the option available. All right, sector environment is going to be moderate. We just don't want it to be, um, we, we just like a regular, regular environment level. Um, uh, let's see here and then sector security is fine so uh, 
right, skybox. So the skybox is gonna be the brightness and the colors and all that jazz around the, the in the background. I tend to like a realistic background. But honestly, the game really looks good. It looks a lot better when when it when it has a uh, has a nice skybox. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do an average frequency just so it isn't so crazy layered. Uh, color variation is average again. Fog generation frequency of average. Background pop prop frequency of uh, rare or ah uh, average. Let's just average. So my apologies for going quiet every once in a while. I, I, I'm pausing the recording so it doesn't just eat up time. Uh, the stream, of course, is just kind of going to keep going. But I'm trying to figure out how to let uh, people know that I'm streaming this, uh, since there are some people who I think um, that I've been on the forums and uh, Discord with who would be interested. But uh, I am unfamiliar with how to do any of that stuff. So uh, bear with me. Okay, so stations. Let's see here. We want an average station frequency. Uh, level one. Okay, yeah, that that's that's the starting level, I guess. Station refiner speed. Um, oh, I get them faster, I guess. I guess four hundred percent is the standard. Training speeds and so forth. I mean, that's that's fine. Uh, yeah, everything is about normal. We're good there. Warp gates. Uh, I like lots of gate links. Uh, average toll frequency, 100% toll modifier, gate lock frequency is average, key frequency is average, finding keys, um, and so on, uh, and the price modifier is fine. Okay. Resources. Resource spawn frequency, rarity, all of these are, I, I usually just leave them as they are. Um, the economy. Yeah, market frequency, all of this again is, is good. I mostly just uh, I worry mostly about the macro level stuff and not so much about this kind of stuff so what was that yeah okay uh, but you can do so many things here you can make so many uh, tweaks to your sandbox it's just absolutely bonkers all right oh, events yeah we want that that game speed is regular and so on recharge okay so we are good there close that out I think we're about to generate, we're ready to go. Yeah, let's generate. And now we're going to take a while. Yeah, so uh, so basically I'm going to be I'm streaming this and then I'm recording it. It's going to go up on YouTube. I don't know how long I'm going to be streaming for, uh, maybe an hour or so, um, just to kind of get familiar with the new update. Uh, there's a lot of visual uh updates led to the UI and uh, balancing and, and a whole bunch of things and I've been reading a little bit about people commenting on these changes and I just haven't seen them yet myself so we'll we'll see how it goes uh, I I don't play this game very well at all the last time I streamed and, and recorded this I kept dying to life support problems and my understanding is that life support has changed quite a bit and now you don't lose life support unless your armor is damaged I think um, I feel like that might uh, might be a little bit too OP in terms of how life support is is used, but I mean, it makes makes more sense realistically. But at the same time, uh, it, it might actually be less fun. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, the, there'll be fewer shenanigans at least on my end. Yeah, five hundred sectors is a lot. So. This is going to take a minute. Almost there, almost there. Oh, 
All right, got to, got to, they got to put put all the gates together. Oh boy, yeah. Okay, takes a minute. <laughs> this is a big ass game save. Probably probably should have made it smaller. You never know. Might actually get out that far. I have never gotten out that far. <laughs> Even when I do fifty sector game saves, I end up just going to like ten sectors, and then there's another update, and I'm like, oh, shiny things, and then I start over. Uh, I I rarely. Um, continue my saves and uh, over the past year there've been so many updates so in such rapid fire succession I'm like oh my god so I just keep uh, keep restarting so uh, m my hope is that this one is gonna basically be uh, nice and stable um, for uh, a chunk of time and I'll be able to do this stream and then maybe do a series uh, on a different save uh, on YouTube and just kind of do half hour chunks and uh, and just do my uh, Let's Play Poorly series for Astrox. Ah, here we go. We're going in. We're going in. Going in slowly, slowly. And here we are. OK, so I'm going to open up all my panels. And uh, let's see, okay, so that's my ship. Yeah, look at that guy. Okay, so I gotta do some settings here. Uh, one thing I always do is I switch my hotkeys around, just one hotkey, because uh, I don't like the, I don't like using, um, I don't like using the uh, caps lock for toggling uh, afterburner. I just don't like using the cap locks, caps lock at all because it just, it, you know, who knows. Uh, so I always switch that to B and that's it. That should do it. All right, so here we are. Uh, where where are we exactly? We are, let's find out what our map looks like. Uh oh. Oh god. Okay. Oh, that took a minute just because I had to generate our 500. Look at that. 500 sectors. Look at that. That's insane. All right, so I'm in Ubel. I've got links to uh, these other sectors here, these other systems. And let's see. Nothing within range for my passive scanner, so I'm just going to do this. I'm going to touch everything. No, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I just want to look at it. Okay, looking at that. I don't want autopilot. Turn off my autopilot. Okay. There we go, and there's another one down there, here and here. Okay, so that's Imperium Republica. I think that's everything. One, two, three, four, yeah, those are the four gates, and then everything else is just is ships flying around, and uh, uh, let's find out what kind of ore this is in this sector here, so let's clear these out. I know, I'm, a, I'm aware that there are efficiencies in clearing out my um, scanners and things like that. I just, I don't remember what they are, so I will have to learn them over time again. Uh, so I could clear all lock targets with the H key or just hit that. Okay, so there we go. So we're going to go over here and uh, just go into the station. And uh, I know that there probably won't be any missions generated because usually they don't start out that way. And I kind of have to go out and do some things first. Uh, so my understanding now is that things got moved around a little bit. Yeah, the afterburner's down here. It used to be over here. I do think this is a better place for it. I know some people have been complaining that it's down here, but honestly, if you can't tell the difference between afterburner on and off, I, I don't know what to tell you. All right, we're going in. We're going in. There we go. All right, so here we are. Let's take a look at the... Missions options, no missions. Okay, didn't think that there would, didn't think there would be. So we're going to garage. Uh, no, we're not going to garage. We need to go to life support, and we need to. Oh, right. For I should probably, I should probably get better life support right up front. Um, okay, so this is new, and I don't know where I'm looking. Uh, I mean, I know what I'm looking at. I just don't know which. Uh, which category I need. Probably that one. No. 
Um, oh, support. There we go. That's what I want. I want diapers. I always want diapers first. And with that, oh god, what kind of thing is that? That is waste, so I need to get rid of the waste. Do I have a waste one? No, I don't. Okay. All right, 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 right. Okay. And then I still need a thermal regulator. Okay. Filter by support. What do we have here? Pages. All right, maybe I need to do a search. Uh, there we go. Okay, there's a thermal controller right there. That one's a nice cheap one. We'll get that guy. And we'll go back. Oh, got to go back to life support panel and put that on. Go to our garage. What do we have? We have a pulse laser and ore harvester. Oh yeah, everything has changed. The names have changed. I like it. And then there's a passive slot. So, okay, so we're gonna drop. We're gonna not drop, but we put that. Oh god, that's loud. Put that over there. And do that. And then let's see. We're gonna go do some mining. We probably have some skill points right now. Yeah, we do. Oh yeah, this is very different. Um. I am going to have to get used to this. <laughs> uh, I don't have a complaint about it. Uh, it's just something that's been very changed, very uh, greatly changed, which, you know, it's good. So excavation. Okay, so this, I, I like that it shows the training level now, uh, right here on the, on the, on the list. Um, so takes these points. I do wish there were also a way to show on the card whether or not I can pick it up. Because on this one, for example, I cannot pick it up because it takes 20 skill points. But there's no way for me to know that here. It would be nice also to be able to sort by what I can, like filter out what I can take. Uh, perhaps some kind of a toggle or something that would only show me uh, the ones that I'm able to buy. Um, but, all right, so we're going to undock. We're going to go over here now I know there's a there's a module I know there's a keypad a key press for that but I don't remember what it is um, so I'm gonna do that grab some atomite could speed up a little bit here into turbo mode all up. Yeah, full. Go back to regular speed and head back to the station. Man, these stations have always been, I've always found these to be really gorgeous looking. I love the shading. I love the light. I love the coloration. I've always been really impressed with them. All right, here we go. Now we're going to go. All right, so what would I make? Oh, I got some points. For my atomite. All right, I would make fi about 5,500. Let me see if I can do better with the refinery. I mean, I'm going to have to pay some, but I just want to get a sense of the calibration. So I'm speeding up to turbo. The log. Oh, the log will tell me. Right, export to storage. I don't know if that'll trigger. This time around, it might have to do it at the start of the refining. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. What, yeah, there's our storage over there. But I want to see what what my uh, profit margin is if I refine the materials first versus just selling the ore directly. And I know that there's probably going to be some fluctuation in what I can get from various stations uh, due to supply and demand, um, but. That a lot of that may have changed in this update, and so I don't want to make any assumptions. I'm going to basically be playing this as if I uh, were a dum dum, which is not very far from the truth. Okay, I, yeah, I don't need to. I don't need to see that anymore. Okay, so we paid 325 to do that, and then if I, what about my button here? Okay, shift. Okay, if I sell everything. 
it's crap. Yeah, okay. All right, no good. All right, so it is not worthwhile, at this station at least, to refine first and then sell. That might be different elsewhere. Uh, I'm not getting a pop-up like I used to do when it says, oh, you know, the value here is really, really low because of supply or what have you. Uh, I'm not getting that, so that, that may not be around anymore, or it may just not apply to this station. Um, probably the latter. So I'm just going to sell it. Um, did not do very well with that, which is fine. Uh, still no missions. I don't expect those yet. So I'm going to go back out again, uh, do another refining run, another uh, uh, mining run here. Oh, i got to remember what the buttons are for these, the keys. That's done. Oh, look, I've got more points. All right, I don't really have enough money yet to really go hog wild at the university. After burner. But we'll get there pretty quickly, I think. Certainly more quickly than I do in most other games. <laughs> that does tend to be the case. Still no missions, all right. So now if I still sell these straight up, I'm actually gonna get 5,500 just from selling that. Um, so that is that is a good thing. Still no missions. Okay, let's see. Maybe there's something I can get at the university. I don't know. Uh, we are one thing I want to do. Uh, yeah, we said we can't do the mission. Why am I unqualified? Okay, max mission contracts, and I cannot get those here. That's interesting. I've never encountered that before, uh, where you can't get the max mission contracts thing at the at your starting station. That's interesting. I mean, I'm sure that's just some RNG situation. I'm not super worried about that. Um, don't really, oh, the university discount. I should probably start with that. Damn, it's expensive though. But over time, it's just gonna be so much more worthwhile for me. All right, we'll do that. I started training, that's fine. I uh, don't need to stick around here. It's gonna be slow, but this isn't the sort of thing I need to worry about having it right away. All right, so no mission. So let's, uh, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Well, if, you, if you've if uh, you seen my other videos, you know exactly what I'm gonna do because I uh, am very unoriginal and, and very uncreative when it comes to this. I'm just gonna do some more mining. Oh God. Okay, and we got our discount training, that's good. Probably speed up here. Yeah. All right, that is done, and let's go back to station. I'm actually going to set it to uh, auto dock. <laughs> Just like that. Okay. No missions yet. All right, we're going to sell. Oh, oh. Okay. Did it used to do that? I don't remember it doing that before. Maybe it's been a while since I played. Look at that. My uh, my profit goes down. I'm imagining because we're overloading this, this, the the station with the with the materials. Unless the quantity is different, which I don't think it is. I think it's the same. All right. I'm just gonna do that. Yeah. Let's take a look. Quantity. Yeah. Okay. Fifty four. Yeah. Yep. 100%. That's what happened. Yeah, we must have... This must be too many. There must be, I mean, it must be overloaded here. I like it. Okay. So that means we are now finally... Well, for the first time since I started playing, uh, truly incentivized to get out of this system. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get out of here. We're going to go... Uh, oh, right. I need to... Go through, I need to find the gate. Uh, where are you? We're gonna go there first. Which is called, which one's that? Is it not gonna tell me? Oh, I gotta do that. Okay, we're going, we're going up to here, okay. I can, I can do that. I have a very small amount of money. I'm not used to leaving this home system with that little money, but 
not getting much money off of the Atomite over time is uh, definitely a, uh, an incentive to GTFO, so. Oh, wow. That looks so cool. All right. Okay, here we are. Passive scan. That's something over there. I don't want to go to it, though. Why does it do that? Um, there's something over here. Nope, don't want to do that. I know there's a way... Th there's some jiggery-pokery I can do to prevent myself from just automatically autopiloting to stations and stuff, but I don't know what it is. I don't like having to keep hitting my autopilot off key. The, sh the, the default should be... I really think the default should be single click to scan it, double click to pilot to it. That, that I think really is what it should be. But it doesn't look like there's a station around here. There's no station in this zone. Hmm. Right? Am I, am I missing anything? I don't think so. Uh, clear all lock targets. There we go. Yeah, and there's only the one there's only one warp gate here, which means that this is a dead end system. Okay. So there's no further linkage out. And that's Adamite ore. Okay. Alright, so that means we really need to go back here. To, oh god, that's so cool. I really do like that. Alright, so here we are back in here. All right. Okay. What, what was I doing? I had to pause for a second. Uh, oh, right, 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 right. I need to go. I need to go find these other other zones here. So let's. Uh, no, no. That's the one. Is that the one I want to go to? I think so. Yeah, that one's over there. Okay. Love it. Ugh, it's so good. It looks so good. That looks so good. It all looks so good. All right. Passive scan. Now, why is it when I click him, I don't immediately go there? Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I've never gotten it. I've been. Exp it's been explained to me multiple times, and I've never understood how how to make that magic happen a certain way. Okay, so that's the Oak Station. We've got two more uh, warp gates here. So, oh, there's three more. There's another one somewhere. Where are you? Oh, there it is, right down there. Is that it? No, there it is. Oh, I've got to clear those and that one. Okay. So we'll wait for that one to scan in, and then we've got, this is probably Atomite. That's my guess. There we go. Okay. Uh, Oak Station. I want to test something here. Yeah, okay, so if I tab out, if I uh, alt-tab out, it's, it pauses the game. There's, there must be a way to avoid that. Is there? I don't know. Run in background. Yes, there we go. That's what I want. Awesome. That, that solves that. That way I can uh, go be anxious about making sure that everything's working without uh, interrupting uh, the game. Okay, Oak Station. This is a mining facility, so these guys are my jam, right? Let's go to the lounge. Uh, okay, so we got some news. I, I rarely look at the news. Uh, it's a personal failure of mine. Um, it's just, it, it ends up kind of being just a lot of noise in my head. 
uh, and I don't necessarily really know how to interpret it in a way that I can just kind of glance. So uh, restock operations, operation at Oak has been completed. Um, keep the market supplied. Okay, so that's probably going to impact uh, sale prices and so forth. Hey, look, I managed to think of something there. Okay, we could do mercenaries, but we can't get those yet. I, uh, yeah, we don't have the um, we don't have the skills for that yet. So. And there's only a combat and a recon. I don't really want those. Okay, do we have any missions? No missions. Dang. Okay. Well, it looks like we're going to have to do some uh, some more mining then. I might also be able to try to do some trade. Uh, my history, my sort of history with trade in Astrock has been kind of hit or miss, uh, mainly because the the way the market is displayed. I, I understand it's been updated, so I, I may have uh, may I may be pleasant. To pleasantly surprised, but I've been kind of disappointed with the way it um, just doesn't give you the kind of information you need to really do efficient trade one runs, the kind of information that you would normally expect to be in a game like this. Obviously, it's still in progress and, and it has been updated quite a bit, uh, so I'm hopeful that that will, uh, that will improve and may have already been improved. We, we shall see. All right, cargo bay is full. Let us head back to Oak and let's see how poorly our profit margins look. All right, if I just straight up sell, oh yeah, it's rough. Oh, that's rough. You know what? And I bet you, I bet you, bet you, bet you. Yeah, it's probably that, the quantity of ore that's in the system here. Will I do better if I refine? Probably not. Yeah, so we're going to do this, and we'll see what the values are. We'll just have to sell it, because there's obviously no way to squish it back into being Adamite ore. Um, but uh, then I'm going to, and then I'll actually investigate the market and see if, if it's got the kind of information that I think it needs in order to make trading a viable gameplay loop. I am running low on cash, though. Wow. This is the roughest start I've ever had. And I'll be I'll be honest with you I'm I'm glad right because I don't because the easy, the early game has always had always been very very rapidly like you just just managed to get a massive ship right off the bat it was it was very easy to just kind of spam your missions and make your money and, and it was that was that was it okay that's not as bad as it was but it's still rough all right we're gonna do that uh, oh we finally got a mission okay see now there we go we got one mission. We definitely need that because that's going to be 60k. So we're going to accept that. I don't know how much do I have. Is it a time limit on this? Two hours. Okay, so we're good. I can disable that. All right, so that's fine. So we're just going to go over here to the market, take a look. Um, let's filter by supply. Okay, this is okay. So that's what this station is supplying. I, I okay, that's good. That's what this station supplies. So theoretically, the prices are low, lo lower. Uh, unfortunately, and this could be a good thing or a bad thing, there's no galactic average differential information here, um, which on the one hand, yay, because why would I know that information? But also boo, because I do want to know that information. There is a discount, 28% off, it says over there. Let me click here. So that is telling me something. I guess that's just 28% 20, off of the base price or off of the normal market price that this would have. I don't exactly know for sure. Um, so, you know, that, that might be the information I'm looking for, um, but I, I don't know for sure. So, um, but yeah, so the base price is 400. 
Is that 400.000 or 400,000? It's hard to tell. Uh, versus 3.1 or 316, 316,000 or 316. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's 28% off. 28% off of the base price. What is the base price relative to the galactic average? That is the question. Or is that essentially the galactic average? I guess, I mean, I guess if, if you strictly speaking, that would be the quote unquote galactic average, just because that is your base and everything is calibrated around that. But it would be interesting to know if overall the stations in the galaxy um, ha are higher than the base or lower than the base just on in, uh, in general, because there may be a global supply chain issue or maybe there's a regional supply chain issue. That would be really fun information to have. Uh, and then demand. This is what they want. They're out of stock. Excellent. Good stuff. This was probably in the older versions of the game with the older UIs, but I didn't find them or didn't find them as easily as I would like. I was always getting stuck looking at the buy orders and the sell orders, and I, I could never really... I mean, I wrapped my head around them, but I just found them to be tedious because you could only do the buy order or the sell order if, if you had the, exactly the amount of all of the items. And it just it just became kind of a, a puzzle more than a trading uh, gameplay loop. And it was just like, ah, didn't, I did not enjoy that. Uh, but the supply and demand, brilliant. Again, I think this was probably in the, in the old UI and I just never saw it because it just wasn't made as prominent as it, as it could have been. And this is great. This is great. So if I want to do this, if I want to do a supply run, I could buy this, sell it somewhere else. Now let me see. Uh, there is a button. There's a button somewhere. Uh, is it this guy? Journal. I don't remember what the toggle button is. Is it J? It is not J. That's something else. J is the ship. It's my J ship. Oh god, that's awful. Okay, journal. Uh, stations. These are the stations I know. Okay. Market. Okay, market. Um, this is what. Oh God. Yeah. So, again, I, I appreciate having the information. <laughs> I do appreciate the information, but I don't know what to do with it. This is telling me what the prices are, but it's not telling me anything about the quality of those prices. Um, it is telling me what the supply and demand are. Again, brilliant. That is good stuff. Uh, and it's telling me what its services are. So this is useful. Um, that's very useful. Again, it probably was in the old versions, but again, I, I just wasn't looking in the right places. Um, doesn't have any orders. This is the skills that it sells. These are the ships that it has. The missions that it was offering last time I was there, and then the offices. Okay, and this is the tutorial stuff. All right, so. Uh, okay, so coming in through uh, chat through um, through the stream. Uh, yo, Dave from the Discord here. Great to see someone who has an idea how to play this. <laughs> well, <laughs> stick with it a minute and you'll realize that I don't. <laughs> I mean, I have been playing on and off about 100 hours, but uh, yeah, I am uh, I am very much a noob when it comes to this UI, the new UI. Obviously, it's only been out a few hours, but also just overall, I am a very inefficient player. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, uh, so this is okay. So other structures, active scan reports. So I didn't, haven't done any active scans on any of the non-station structures yet, which is why they're not showing up here. Uh, I've never done any station building or anything like that. I've never played around with any of the structures really, so I don't know what the value is to have this information. But I imagine that it is valuable once I get into that element of the gameplay loop where I start, where it starts to matter. Uh, resource scans, mm, haven't done any of those. I'm not really sure what that involves. That probably means scanning ore. I'm not sure. Uh, ship scans, okay, yeah, so this is great. Th th having this information here uh, is will be useful down the road. Uh, so Devil, you said, uh, I just do mining and feel so lost. You know what? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'm with you there. So I mostly would do mining because the other elements of the game didn't seem that they were mature enough yet for me to really engage with them in a way that I felt was efficient. And I'm not an efficient player by any stretch. I don't min-max, I don't try to optimize, but I do try to find gameplay loops that feel satisfying. And I felt that the mining gameplay loop was pretty satisfying as well as doing missions. 
but the trade gameplay, which is personally my favorite part of most of these types of games, just just wasn't there yet. It wasn't there, and it might be there now. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, we don't have any blueprints, uh, miscellaneous notes. Uh, I could add notes if I want to, which is really nice. I remember when when uh, when Momo added this to be able to take notes and keep, keep information steady for yourself so you don't have to have an external like pen and paper, which is always an important thing for me. I don't like games that rely on you going outside of the game to have information that you need. Like, I don't like having to go to a wiki to learn how to play the game. That is a failure of the game, not my failure. That's The game doesn't provide me with what I need. So, uh, so I like having the notes. I like the fact that the game pretty much teaches you how to do it, especially if you go through the tutorials and so on. Uh, and then I could search for market, market items, university skills. Okay, so let's do a test here. So Imperium Publica, we're looking at, let's see what they've got. They've got a market of acidic gel battery. So I'm gonna do a search here. I'm just gonna look up acidic and search. Acidic gel battery, okay, there we go. And then that is going to jump me to U-Bell. It's going to jump me to Imperium Republica because it's showing me where they all are available. So now that is, this, this, I've seen, this has happened before. I've seen this in the older UI, in the older versions. This is a brilliant way to get at a trade loop setup. Like this, this is really good. I love that this, this searching option allows you to immediately do that. Um, to now, now it automatically GPSs me. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna we're gonna try to use this. I, I, I've only been to two stations, so there's a chance that this isn't gonna actually do me any good. Um, but all right, so we're in Oak right now. It supplies. Char okay, so it supplies life support and stuff like that. Okay, repair armor. This doesn't demand. Doesn't it only wants uh, Christmas stuff apparently? Um, but. Let's see. Maybe I can. Maybe I can still sell something there. So, energy charge. Let, let's look up charge. Let's do a search for charge. And uh, okay. So the Imperium Republica. Now is it selling them, or buying them, or both? That is something else. I wish I, I could see here. Okay. This is telling me, medium energy charge has a trade entry at Imperium Republica, but it doesn't tell me if it prefers to buy, prefers to sell supplies or demands, anything like that. Maybe that information will come up if there's a distinction, but it doesn't appear to be one right now. So if I do this, all right, so medium energy charge, it's gonna, it's gonna try to, it's gonna GPS me over to there. Uh, but since I know I can buy it here, I'm gonna buy it here. Oh, that's the journal. I don't get it. Okay, get out of the market. So medium, what am I looking for? Medium something charge. Medium energy charge. 5% off because it's a supply. It's supplying it here. Uh, I don't have that kind of money. Oh, great. I don't have the guy. I can't buy it. <laughs> I mean, all right, fine. Uh, let's do light shield charge. Let's see, because I could, I could afford exactly one of those. <laughs> uh, let's do this again. Uh, light shield charge is that what I said okay so they do it does have an entry at Imperium all right light shield charge let's buy one five percent off bought all right so now we're gonna undock and we are immediately GPSing over to U Bell and to the Imperium Republica station because that's what we selected in the in the search it's gotten so pretty. Uh, I'm supposed to be going through that. Right? I'm supposed to go through that. Hmm, it's not, not sending me there. All right, well, let's let's see. Okay, so uh, that is a, an odd little glitch, but that's fine. Uh, normally, it, it should send me there. Okay, now it's sending me to the... Did I not have it set up? No, it is set to auto auto warp. Um, so that may be a bug. Uh, I don't know. I may check. Uh, I might check in on the uh, Discord later. Um, okay. Now we're in the market here, and we're gonna try to sell that station by price nineteen grand. Yes. Okay. I bought at a discount, and I'm selling at a profit. 
it works. It probably worked before. It, like I said, it probably existed in the previous iterations of the game. But the way the UI has been clarified and uh, cleaned up makes it easier to access the, the loop, the gameplay loop for trade. And I like it. I like this. I do think there's a little bit more information that it can provide. Uh, but for right now, I ain't complaining. So we have this mission here. We have to harvest Adamite ore in me, uh, me and Akkad. I love the names that they that, that he has uh, generated for this. So we're gonna need to get to me and Akkad, which I guess is over here. We're gonna get out. Passive scan in case no, there's nothing. I can't. There, there is a, there is a thing right there which I hadn't touched before, but uh, it looks like I was too far away from my passive scanner. Ah, oh, man, the warp. I'm just never gonna get. I'm never gonna get used to that. How cool that is. All right, here we are. Now we need to find that special ore. Where is it? Am I in the right place? Yes. Special ore here. Uh, oh, 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 I saw it. There it is somewhere. Uh, okay, there it is. All right. All right. Go towards it. You can only see one full quarter of the screen. Ah, that is um, probably me. Uh, hang on a second. Wow. Let me see if I can fix that. I'm a professional. Is that better? Wow, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I've been I've been running this for 47 minutes that way. <laughs> All right, what was I doing? Uh, I got to turn on my my stuff here. Oh, well, that was quick. All right, so well now that now that we actually can see the whole screen, now that you can see the whole screen, <laughs> I'll go back to the station and show you what I was talking about before in terms of how the UI lets you do trades, um, uh, let, let, lets you kind of do trade uh, more efficient gameplay loop for trading. Uh, we need to go to Becky Hillom uh to the Void Raiders. Okay, so where is that? Uh, it's somewhere. Oh, there it is. Okay, we gotta go over to that one. So we gotta go this way first. Okay. Thank you for mentioning that. Uh, I was gonna do this whole thing completely messed up. Wow. This is interesting. Oh, I'm in turbo mode. Oh, that's weird. Why is that doing that? Okay, that's interesting. When I was in turbo mode, uh, it looks like the autopilot glitched out. All right, so we're going to the next one, and then we'll be able to go through through the warp gate uh, to get to the destination. And then uh, we'll go over the um, the the trade info again um, real quick, just so you can see what I was looking at. Um, So I do think, I do think the trade uh, loop is going to be much better now. Uh, all right, so I need to go to Beck, was it Beckholm Sidbor? I don't, I don't even know. I can't even pretend to, to, to say that correctly. Is that it? No, it's this one. Nope, that's not, that's not it. Nope, God, that's not it. Where is it? There it is. Oh, God. Okay, <clears throat> but that's a different one that I hadn't seen before. Okay. It's so pretty I can't I can't handle it I cannot handle it I can't handle how pretty that is okay so we need to drop off over here 
Yeah, and so you were only seeing like this chunk of the screen. Wow, that's uh, that's embarrassing. Um, and it was because I, I had originally I used to play this game in 1080, and then I switched to 1440. Uh, yes, the animation when going between system is new. Yes, that's the the warp field, uh, that liquidy watery thing is like, yeah, that's new. That's that's uh, that's a change. Uh, I think in this version or the most recent version uh, before this one uh, he added that because it, it, there were uh, obviously there's like uh, data there's there's data transfer that has to happen in between and it meant kind of going to a black screen and then backing up uh, again unlike in X4 foundations where it's a seamless transition in Astrox it's not seamless and so having a warp field kind of adds a little bit of you know whoops a little bit a little bit of uh, candy eye candy which I like um, but yeah, so I used to be uh, playing this in 1080p, and oh, why is it not? See, this is interesting. It's not auto docking like it's supposed to. Um, I used to do it at 1080p, and then I switched to 1440, and then I forgot to switch my OBS around. So anyway, um, okay, mission is complete. We've got that mission done. So now what I want to show again is what I was doing here before. So in our journal, uh, we have our our regular logs. Oh, hey, I got some good points. And then this is a list of all the stations we've been to, not including the one we're in right now. I think we actually have to exit first. Let me, uh, let me see. Let me exit here so that we'll have it. All right, now let me go to our journal. Yes, there we go. So these are the three stations that I've been to. Imperium Republica, Oak, and Void Raiders. So um, over here on the right side of the screen that you couldn't see before, <laughs> Um, is a list of what the station market is or, or was the last time I was there. So this only updates when you touch it, right? When you go to that place, it updates it updates your journal. I, I like that, um, the idea of limited information. It is, um, it, it's, uh, it, it's useful. Um, it, it's a, a useful gameplay mechanic to kind of encourage you to keep traveling around. So this is what it's what it has on station as part of its market. Unfortunately, and this is this is my criticism of this, is that it doesn't show you the prices relative to a galactic average or to a base price. Um, I wish that it did. That is the kind of information that that theoretically you as the pilot would know, right? You would you would be able to get that information, especially since when you're looking at the market, it does tell you what base prices are. So I think that this really should show you the relative the price differentials um but that said so we got our market then we've got orders this is what the what the station wants uh, uh like a specific buy order these are the skills that it offers the ships that it offers there the missions that are available there and then the offices which uh from what i understand for the most part right now is just the tutorial offices and things like that but okay so oka obviously is going to have a different station market uh, and different set of skills and void raiders has a different market um, have I, I don't haven't been to the market so I think it, that's why it doesn't know uh, yeah so now I see the market here in uh, void raiders and I think I don't know if I have to do I have to go back out I probably do I probably have to exit let's let's undock and see what happens whoops don't want to keep that there let's undock dock back in and then let's see if that gives me the updated info Yes, okay, there we go. So now this is the station market that I opened up. Um, you, so you have to go to the market to populate your journal. Again, it's it's interesting. I like, I like this execution that you actually have to do the thing that would give you the data. Uh, okay, uh, so the thing that I thought that, that, that is good, uh, that, is, that is really exciting, uh, which again was in previous versions, but here I think it just kind of, he, he updated the, the interface overall to make this um, uh, nicer. So so we know that this station uh, supplies uh, torpedo launchers and demands holiday stuff. Oak supplies uh, energy charges, armor repair, that kind of stuff, and demands a whole bunch of mechanical items here. Void Raiders supplies, interesting, a lot of filters, a lot of uh, diaper related things. Uh, and demands office furniture, kitchen appliances, and interior lighting. I love it how the Void Raiders, that's what they really want. Um, so if we're here in Void Raiders and we are, let's say we want to buy, we want to sell some rubber tubing to Oak. So we're going to do a search here and we're going to look up tubing. We don't need to look at the skills, so we're not going to just let it populate skills. Rubber tubing. 
Okay, so rubber tubing is, there's a, an entry to, for rubber tubing in oak. Now, like I was saying, I do wish that this would show um, what type of entry this is, that it's a demand entry. There's also rubber tubing in, in the Void Raiders where we are right now. Um, but the question is, is it a supply demand? We know we just looked at it that it's not one of the ones that it's supplying. Um, so it's just in the market. Uh, but what we could do is set our destination to Oak and then go into the market here and buy some rubber tubing. Oh no, we don't want it here because it's a really high markup. So this is not the place to do that. So yeah, you can search for commodities. You just do this from your own journal, which is down here, toggle journal, it comes up. Any place that you have been to that you have entered the market screen of and then exited the station, it will appear in your journal. Uh, so now, like I said, there are still some limitations that I wish uh, would get updated. So for example, we know that rubber tubing is in this market, but we don't know from here that it's way too expensive to buy because it's at 72% markup. So instead, we're going to go to Imperium and see if it's better over there. Turbo and Afterburner. Afterburner off. Turbo still on. Ah, oh, so good. All right. All right, so it's warping us over to U-Bell. Turbo. On turbo, and we're going in. And I like that the, the watery warpiness changes. is different colors depending on the backdrops and all that jazz. I love it. Okay, so this time... This time the GPS correctly got me. It's, it's actually sent, so what it's supposed to do is when you click on one of those entries in that search, it will set your GPS to the station that you selected. And when it's working, which it didn't the first time, but it did this time, it will, you, you, you exit the station and immediately just like send you right over. So you don't have to like, you you don't have to fiddle. You don't, you don't have to, um, it's not fiddly. You don't have to kind of like to type, uh, click here, click here, click here, click here. You just tell your computer, basically, you tell your piloting system, send me to where I want to go, right? I mean, it's a regular autopilot, but the fact that you can autopilot directly from your search screen is quite good. So we're looking for tubing. Discount is 8% off. Yes. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, let's buy all the things, 294 of those. Confirm purchase. Okay, so now we're gonna close our market and we're gonna go back into here and do another search for the tubing and we're gonna go to Oak. And undock and then it will send us over to Oak. And we should be able to sell it there for a profit uh, because that was something that that station was demanding, I believe. Unless I got it backwards, which is possible because I don't pay attention to things sometimes. Demands, rubber tubing, yes, okay. Yeah. So, so basically, this this option and the cleanliness of the UI in in the, in that respect now makes um, makes the trade gameplay loop a lot more fun, a lot more viable, uh, because you don't have to write things down on a piece of paper. You don't have to pay attention to like prices in the quite the same way. Like, like there's still a little bit more that they that they could have on those screens, right? But um, but th this is a really good start. Okay, so let's sell our rubber tubing. Considered valuable and currently in demand at the station market. Due to the rarity of this item, you will receive a bonus multiplier to the sell price. Excellent. So we're going to get 17700 out of that. Confirm sale. And then when we look at our market log, we bought it for thirteen six, and we're selling it for seventeen seven. So we made a, we made a little profit. I love it. And once we get a ship that has a, a cargo space larger than uh, a Nat's asshole, um, we will do even better. So let's sell our adamant, uh, uh, the, our excess adamite ore from that uh, special one that we did. We just don't, we don't need it. Um, we've got 87k. Let's see what's in the university here. There we go. Max mission contracts. Now we can have multiple missions. Boom. All right, we'll do that. We're training that up. We're gonna want the mission negotiations as well. Um, I can't, whoops, I can't get that yet. Um, 
but we will want that because that will just improve the prices. Gives me an emission payment 5% increase. I always kind of start there um, because I've always uh, I've always been really heavy into the missions in Astrox because they tend to give me the most money uh, if you just you know if you complete the even the completing the easy simple ones this, you still make a lot more money uh, than than you would with other uh, other methods right now uh, maybe that's changed a bit with the prices like all the commodity changes that they that he's done he's updated all the he's done some item rebalancing so. I think that that might help. Um, okay, so now we can train that. And let's see, are there missions here? Still no missions here, okay. So we are gonna go somewhere else then. We're gonna go, we went to, where, we, where are we now? We're in, oh, we're in a different place. Oh, yeah, we're in this one. Um, so what, what station are we? We're at Oak. So no missions at Oak right now. This place has the Void Raiders station. This place doesn't have any stations. You can see up there in the upper right. And it's a dead end. We know that it's a dead end because it's only got a warp gate to U-Bell. This one is also a dead end, but it does have a station. So let's go check out what's over here uh, at Fopoko Turnstad. Turnstad. I don't know. All right. It's down that way. It would be nice if the ship could approach the warp gate a little bit closer through the correct direction before it did this, but um this is definitely a, a really nice a nice visual improvement okay let's see what we got here some ships are out there you can see the different ships there's the star oh gosh this is just like a dead zone out here there's not even really any ore out here there's just this guy what's that guy oh there's a little couple couple of uh asteroids that's uh, a public energy generator don't need that more ships, and then we got some ore, but let's find out. It's probably Atomite because we're still in our um, the the um, the region around our starting sector. So, hmm, yeah, this is not not the best system to be in. Uh, it's just kind of nothing here. Okay, that's right. Uh, let's go back to this place. That's interesting. The uh, in uh, I forgot that yeah when you're in um, tactical mode your uh, your your modules are still fully bright like they're fully fully uh, uh, non tronized. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going out there. Is that something I've ever seen before? No, that's a new one. I hadn't scanned that one. Fully rendered. Thank you. That's the right. That's. The <laughs> That's the better way to put it. <laughs> yes. Um, I and I prefer to play in this mode. I don't like the the tactical mode visually. Like it's. I mean, I, it's really valuable. I just don't like to stay in it because um, I, I really like the the quality of the art essentially uh, in the in the regular mode. So. Uh, I tend to stay. I know that there are some players who only play in tactical because it is really, really useful, um, but I, I don't. Uh, okay, so heading over to here, and uh, from here, what can we do? Uh, okay, so we've been there. We know that's a dead end. Let's try down here. I mean, that's also probably a dead end. Um, yeah, if we're looking at where all the other star systems are, most likely one of these two is where we need to be. Um, oh, I didn't, I didn't ever get to that one. Um, what's happening here? Why is there a GPS set up? Hmm. Did I not go where I wanted to go? I guess so. 
We still have one more system to check over here. Which one is this? Dalo Daloni. All right. But like I said, this one's probably a dead end. I don't know. Um, yeah, probably a dead end. That one's probably the, the actual connection. Probably put on my afterburners. There we go. There we go. All right, passive scan. Nothing out here. Oh, it looks like this is going to be another one. Just dead space. There's. Uh, why am I still going? Oh, because I have my afterburners on. Um, there are rocks out here, but that's about it. No stations. Yeah, just more atomite ore. Okay. Well, I mean, we, we need to know for sure, so now we do. So we're going to head back to... What is the name of that place? Ephiatage. Zenodoron. I'm just going to call it Zenodoron. That's, that, that, that's easier to pronounce. So the way I have it set up, I uh, I have it showing all of my uh, all of the systems, and so you can kind of guess where you're likely to get uh, junctures. Because out here, obviously, there's there's no there are no other stars nearby, so um, that's not surprising. So most likely, this one down here is what links to these two. But we'll see. All right, where am I? Okay, so now we're going to go... Let's start with Fapeback. So what I'd like to find is a station that will supply me with a mission. Um, I think I probably should be paying attention to my relations with the various factions. Um, but I haven't... I haven't actually checked that yet. Uh, all right. Okay, yeah, we've got something out here, definitely. There's a station here. Oh, look, and we've got some... Okay, we've, we've, uh, we've got warp gates. Good, good, good. and the station Crystallis. All right, let me finish that scan and then clear them and then check to see what kind of ore we've got. Probably Adamite. Yep, okay. So let's go over to Crystallis. It's a headquarters of somebody. Does it tell me here? Missionary. It's a missionary uh, system. This one is a financial. Ubel is pirate, outlaw, science, enforcement, contractor. Who am I again? Prospector and extractor. That's what I am. I'm an extractor. And so I have a little bit of uh, rep with financial. That's probably why I was able to get that mission. I would assume from selling, buying and selling to that station. Yeah, there are a lot of factions. Um, and I think I think once the real campaign mode is like in place and all the stories are in place and everything like that is set up for the main campaign, I suspect that the faction list will start to make more storytelling sense. Like we will like if we play the campaign, we will get used to understanding them and it'll be easier to follow but for now what we really so obviously like there's 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 the uh job type in my case prospector and then there's the factions and 
for the most part, the thing you need to worry about with the factions is getting enough rep in the factions to be able to take missions of various quality. So if you are buying and selling, I think if you're buying and selling to a, a in a system that has a station that is a financial station, you will get rep with them and so on. Because I bought and sold to that one station, my, my rep now is 0.14 with those guys. My extractor rep, which is what I started with, starts at 5 just because that I am an extractor. Um, so I don't think you need to worry about it, like, a lot. <laughs> uh, at least not at the beginning, but it is it is something to keep an eye on if you want to do missions and things like that. And I, I imagine it also affects uh, uh, prices, perhaps. Maybe there's, like, taxes or refinery prices. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I haven't actually pursued checking into that, but it, it, it probably is. So what was I doing here? Uh, yeah, we're going to check to see if there's missions. No, no missions. And again, probably because of uh, the station being what it is. And do I have a way of finding out? Uh, oh gosh, more uh, more news. They've been restocked. Um, oh, here we go. Station details. Faction missionary. Okay, so it is a missionary. Um, it is a, a missionary station, which means that I would need to get rep. Yeah, oh gosh, yeah, the faces, uh, the faces look so, so good now. He uses, um, oh, what's the name of that, uh, that website, uh, gosh, can't remember the name of it, um, but he uses that now to make all, he, he custom designs all of these faces using that, um, basically that face generating AI thing. Uh, no, I don't think it's this person does not exist. It's called, it starts with an A, Art Breeder, that's it. I think he, I think that's what he's using. I think he's using Art Breeder, which is incredible and it lets you generate um, some really really nice things um, okay so let me see I'm gonna do a test right we're, we're gonna do a test here to see if buying and sell like going and mining and selling the ore to the missionary station will give me any rep at all because I don't know if I've got that rep from uh, with a financial from the mission or from doing something else which allowed me to do the mission so we're going to test that out. And again, this is one of those things that I'm sure I could just go onto the Discord and ask and say, hey, what affects rep? Uh, but I don't like playing that way, right? I, I, I prefer to learn as I go, use the tools in the game to teach me how to play. Um, that, that to me is, is critically important. Um, and if the game can do that, if the game can give me that information through gameplay, uh, I am very, very satisfied. So, okay. Turbo, just so we can get out here, out of my ore, up to 283. That's all I got. You know what I could do? I could try to get some cargo modules. Maybe I'll do that. Missionaries probably don't have that. Or, well, they might in the sandbox, because I don't know if the sandbox yet co kind of populates materials and stuff based on uh, factions in a, in a rational way. I wonder if it still is just kind of populating at random. I know that when the initial sandbox method came out, when the first like sandbox options were put in place, it really was just super random. Um, just, you know, just to get it done, uh, to make it available. Uh, but he may have, uh, Momo may have Im improved that and kind of give it a, given a little bit more accurate feel to the mid to the factions. We'll see. Uh, all right. Why am I not? Why is it? Okay, I did go in. There we go. Okay. So let's sell. And maybe uh, maybe I need to exit. Maybe I don't. We'll see. Let's see if that if that will update me anyway. Uh, factions. No rep change here. Okay. So let's see. Let's see if I just go out and come back in. That might do some kind of a re refresh. No, it does not. Okay, so that did not impact it. So mining, at least that amount of mining, doesn't give me any rep. Maybe I need to do something with buying and selling material goods. We could try that. All right, let's see here. Yeah, I know a lot of people who like to do wiki deep dives. Like, what I'll do is if a manual is provided for the game, I will read the manual and I will enjoy the heck out of the manual. I love reading manuals. But it's supplied by the game, right? Like, the, the game designer has created that and is providing you the information that, that the designer wants you to know. Wikis, to me, just kind of almost like 
cheat codes and I, I don't like cheating, right? I don't like doing that. It doesn't, it doesn't satisfy me. For a lot of people who like to play min-max, they like to optimize, that for them is, is fun gameplay. Uh, they will use wikis to, to further that and I totally get it, but it is absolutely not my jam at all. Okay, so I do now have a mission here. Mm, not sure what triggers that. So that is something to investigate. But what it does mean is this doing this mission will almost certainly give us rep with the missionary faction. Uh, and maybe we did get, maybe we got the mission based on having supplied some ore, um, but we didn't get faction rep from it. Who knows? Uh, okay, so this mission requires exploring a sector you have not already visited, not yet visited. Bonus will be applied to the payment. Yes, okay, but it, it's probably not that far. I hope. Vakbeya. Let's let's find out where that is first. Vakbeya. Oh yeah, it's right there. It's right there. We it's one one hop away. Easy, 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 easy. Let's accept that. Let's do that. And we're gonna undock. Maybe using the refinery to get the real goods gives rep. Okay, that's worth a shot. Let's check that too. We'll do that. I I have a feeling. I'm lost track of where I am. I have a feeling that rep comes from mission completion and access to missions comes from interaction with the station to a certain extent in various ways. And I and I have a feeling that even if it isn't that way yet, that the expectation is that down the road at least, if not already, Doing mining runs gives you mining missions. Doing refining runs or different you know, trade runs gives you trade or delivery missions. I, I hope that that's the way it, it, it is planned or even better is the way it is now. I don't know for sure. Um, let's see. Okay, so now we need to... Oh, nope, nope, that's not what I want. This is what we need. We need to find... There it is, the Gradion Ore. Okay. The nice thing about this, of course, is that we will be able to mine the rest of this out. Well, we won't because when we come back, it'll go away. But we'll be able to mine as much as we can, and we will make a little bit more money because it's Gradion instead of uh, Atomite. All right, zoom up. All right, so we've got the mission harvest object uh, objectives are done, and we're just gonna we're gonna pile in the rest, and then we have to go to Value Star in Kinmetim Pahekvike. All right, we're full up. Now where do we gotta go? Where do we gotta go to Kinmetim, and I don't know where that is. There it is, right down there. Okay, so we're gonna go down through here. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to complete the mission and then I will refine the Gradion in that station and sell the products to that station and see if that impacts the rep at that station. I, uh, or, well, at that faction. Because um, I do think that's a good idea to check that. And if we do that, and if it does, that means either the rep or the trade itself or both is what's doing it. Um, but probably the refining, since the selling the atomite didn't do anything. Um, but we'll see. Turbo, there we go. All right, so now we need to go to King of Ten. There we go. All right. I love how the, the 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 watery stuff changes color as you switch to the skybox of the new state of the new zone. Uh, it's all good. Okay. That's I think our station, right? That's the station we want, and we are I think in a dead end system here. Yeah. Okay. No, that's public energy generator. That's not what I want. Dang it. Where's the station then? Must be off of the plane. Um, I'm in the right spot, right? Oh, there it is. There he is, right down there. Ooh, and there's a couple of things out here. 
No, don't want to go to that one. I want to go to that one. I don't want that. I'm just looking at all these different bits. Okay. Value star. That's what we want. All right. H. There we go. Let's take just see what that is. Uh, it's an atomite ore, and then that is. Oh nope. Just want to see what what type of object that is. All right, defensive platform. Okay. Value star. Here we come. It's a data relay station. It's a green lantern. <laughs> All right, so we made 52K or 51.5. Got some credits and skill points. Okay, so here we go. Now well, let's take a look first up. What we are in a financial faction station. So we should have gotten rep from missionary. Yes, we got the rep from missionary. No rep from financial because the mission was a missionary mission, even though we are delivering it to financial. So that's done. Now let's see what happens if we refine the Gradion. And we don't have any missions available here right now. So, oh, oops. Maybe that will change. that go to the market oh well, actually let me check no missions and no rep change okay so no rep change from that let's just just to be safe let's undock just to be sure undock and come back in maybe it has to update nope okay so refining doesn't give passive um uh rep Let's just sell our stuff. Eh, yeah, not great, but all right. Just gets it out of the it gets it out of the cargo. Okay. But now we got a mission. Interesting. All right. I feel like I'm being punked a little bit. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, but it's another. It's a financial one, so that will give us more financial boost. Uh, financial rep. Um, and you can actually see here, let's see. This is the payment, base payment, cargo bonus, all that, blah, 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 blah. Faction bonus, uh, I'm not entirely sure what that means. I guess maybe that's a payment related bonus. Okay, yes, okay, that must be must be what that is. Um, and then current faction rating 0 .0, or 0 0.14, rating requirement bonus, skill point bonus, and so this is the yeah, these are the other options. So I'm not sure if there's a way to know how much rep you get from the missions. I'm not sure. Doesn't seem to show here, but that is okay. Uh, let's accept that one. We're going to U Bell and return to Becky Iham. So we'll do that. And then we're going to, where is it? U-Bell, mission start, mission end. Great, okay. And then after we've done this, we'll have a fair bit of money. Um, we'll have like about maybe 160K, 170K. We can start looking for uh, some upgrades, cargo upgrades, uh, maybe some other things like that. And maybe even see if there's another ship that we can get So we're in Ubel. What do we need? We need to get to Atomite to get to the Atomite. Okay. There we go. Mission start. 
Mission Harvest complete. Just gonna fill up our cargo. Cargo base full, and then we need to go to Becky. Gotta get over to Becky. Where is Becky? Over here. Now what I could do, actually, let me do that. Let me actually, um, so I'm, am I stopped? Yes, I'm stopped, okay. So we need to go to Void Raiders and Becky. So the easiest way to do that, actually, is we go to our journal, go to our stations, Void Raiders, it automatically sets our GPS when we click on it, and then turn on our autopilot, and that will take us right to the station, rather than just taking us to the system, and then making us then go to the station semi-manually. Go. Now we're going to Becky. Now we're in Becky, and and our uh, pilot oh, glitched out. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's supposed to work. It does apparently half the time, because uh, what I should be able to do is. Do that. Yeah, doesn't seem to want to do that right now. Well, that should work, but it does not. It used to work, I think. So, but that's okay. I mean, it, it, it's it's trivial distinction, right? Like the difference is between getting you all the way to the station or just getting you to the gate and then you just go to the station. Um, but you should be able to, and I think, I'm pretty sure in previous versions we were able to just use the journal to go to those stations, um, just like it, you would, it would just work. You didn't have to be in a station to do it, but maybe you do. Maybe you have to be in a station to use the journal to take you to the next station. Um, who knows? We'll see. Okay, so we've harvested. We're good there. Uh, let's take a look at our rep. And our faction rep doubled, right? It was 0.14, now it's 0.28. So, excellent. Now, um, oh, that's right. Okay, I wonder if... Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I don't have the university here. There is a, uni there is a skill, um, Mission Loyalty, which I believe is the one that increases your rep boost by completion of a mission. So if I get that, I will get a, a rep boost. My rep boost will be higher. Um, so we're in an outlaw faction. We do have some missions. Uh, oh, we can do transporter missions. That's pretty lucrative. 101 circuit boards. But you know what I'm going to do though? I'm going to uh, first of all, I'm gonna, just going to sell my atomite. Okay, did okay. 4 4K is not so bad. What we're going to do now is we're going to see if we can buy some. Uh, modules here. I want. Uh, so, what do I have? What do I have available? To, what do I have? I've got a passive slot. Two R harvesters and a passive slot. So, I think what I want is. Well, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that first. What I'm going to do? I'm going to go to shipyard and see all the all the lovely things I can't buy. <gasps> oh, nice! It's down on the left side now instead of along the top. There were. I'm, I recommended some some options for things along the to do it along the top that would be that would. Be a little bit more interface friendly uh, and he kind of got halfway there Momo got about halfway to where I would have liked it to be um, but uh, I, I do think this is an improvement over over when it was up along the top what I would have liked is for there to have been like a like a view scope slot right in the middle and when you hit the next button over here and it brought the the ship into that viewer viewfinder as it were then it would populate down here uh, he kind of got close by um, by adding the left and right buttons, um, but it still didn't like you still had to click on a ship to open it up. And I think it would just it would have been cooler to have it basically be by by a viewfinder. But uh, this is, I think, an improvement over either one of those options, just because it's more consistent. Uh, all right, so let's see. All we can look at various types of okay, transport ships. There's a shuttle. Okay, so what do we got? That is uh, 
crappier. <laughs> uh, question, is there any point to shuttles and escorts, or is the goal to get the biggest ship? It honestly, I think, depends on how you want to play the game. Um, the, the bigger ships are slower, um, but at the same time, you can trick them out with a lot more passives, a lot more cargo space, and if you're kind of doing a mining and trading game, there is value to that, uh, to the bigger ships just for that, because you can trick them out with passives and actives. However, a lot of these smaller ships, um, not these in particular necessarily, but like notice down here, if I select this one, it has a default cargo bonus of 50%. Like its cargo is just 50% higher than a base escort would be, this particular ship. And I think uh, when it's all said and done, the the various ship classes will have ship specials that relate to that class. I don't know that, that they do at the moment. Uh, I'm Actually, I'm pretty sure they don't because right now Escort Transport has a gun range boost and an afterburner boost. Well, afterburner maybe, but the gun range boost doesn't make thematic sense for a transporter. Cargo does, afterburner might. Um, the shuttle here has a shield boost, which again, I don't know that that necessarily fits thematically. Um, but I think that down the road, once this ship stuff gets overhauled, maybe that will become part of the gameplay. So a battleship, a frigate like this, yeah, so right here, you look at this, um, yeah, no, ship specials are not new. They've been around. It's just that they've been that they're easier to see now. They 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 they're easier to find. They used to be kind of in here in in this area and kind of like uh, not in their own space. Um, but yes, so here these are laser and beam bonuses to this battle frigate, right? Uh, so that is if if you if you need that, then you're going to want a battleship. Um, a, a battle thematic ship. Uh, excavators, uh, he doesn't have any here. Assault ships. Thruster, afterburner, gun strength, missile strength. Thruster, afterburner, right? So, salvager strength is up here. Again, it, not thematically consistent, but for the most part, it seems like they are. Um, so, I, that is that is really what I would say, is that if you are planning to do mostly transport and mining, you will want ships that give you these these inherent boosts um, that that are on top of your passives and actives. So so I think there is reason to buy to like to stick to your transporters and things like that uh, rather than just going with a battleship that has four actives, five passives, and then you just pile a whole bunch of cargo uh, uh, cargo spaces into your passives. You could do that. But then you're also paying for a whole lot of specials you don't need, and 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 why? Why would you do that? Uh, okay, so let's see. We are, we are an excavator. We, we don't have anything here. Uh, this this place doesn't sell them. Um, the transports that it sells are not as good for cargo relative to my ship, and that's really what I'm after right now is cargo. Uh, the supports. Okay, the support ships have cargo, but they, they're way too expensive and give me b specials that I just don't, I don't need right now. Drones, maybe, and that's a huge ship. That's a carrier, wow. Uh, way too expensive. And that's a utility ship, nah, middling, a little bit better than mine right now. But I got 310, so, uh, so I think for right now, the best option for me is to Go to the market and get a see what I can get for passive modules. Um, okay, so there is one there, but I could also just do a, a search for cargo. Okay, we've got some cargo expansions: basic and improved. Basic gives me a ten percent boost. Yeah, big boy ship. Yeah, I I want a big boy ship. I do, I do. I love me some big boy ships. Improved cargo, twenty percent, and I can definitely afford that. And then these are um, documents, these are blueprints, if I'm ever going to fabricate. So, yeah, first thing I'm going to do here, just, just to bootstrap myself up a little bit, is get that and bring myself up to 372. 
Now, I'm, I have Orb Harvester 1. He changed, Momo changed all of the, uh, all of these items around, and so that the, the harvester, like the, the mining beams and all that stuff, they're completely renamed, probably rebalanced, so we're going to, um, we're going to see what we've got. So we're going to look up Harvester, because that's probably, or Harvester 1 and 4. I need, I need a better minor operation. I need level 4 minor operation, which I don't have. So maybe we can do that here. Uh, excavation. Minor basic operation. I'm at level three. I will get level four with this. Let me turbo that a little bit. Oops, turbo. So that that comes up faster. Just gonna kind of wait for that. I still have some skill points. Um, advanced systems. Unlocks a number of other skills that specialize in mining and collecting raw ore. Probably gets me these my, these other maintenance and things like that. So probably worth it. Only costs 6,500. Doesn't take a lot of points. So we'll train that. Once we've got this one done, I think I can get that better harvester. The harvester four. Sitting here waiting. Awkwardly waiting for the university to complete. You know what I could do? Let's see. Is there a... No, that's not what I want. I want university. No, they don't have any university skills to improve speed or anything like that, unfortunately. But am I done? Am I, uh, am I done with the... Almost done. Almost done. Almost there. Almost there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, it's so close. Where is it? Got it. Okay. So now let's go back to the market and let's look at the harvesters. And uh, don't I have that? Don't I have minor basic operation for? Oh, I, I guess I do because it's it's not telling me I shouldn't do that. It's not telling me I should. Oh, but God, God, that markup. 57% markup. No, thanks. No, thanks. I think what I'm going to try to do is see if the, uh, where is that? Where do I see that? I want to see who has the, that's a pirate sector, financial sector, enforcement. Is there a contract? There's nobody. That's science. Missionary, nah, okay. I, I see maybe I'm in a I'm in a, an outlaw sector, and that was a pirate sector. Hmm. I'm not seeing anybody that that kind of like jumps out at me as likely to have cheaper, um, uh, cheaper harvesters. You know what though? Maybe, maybe, maybe I can check my journal. Let me see. All right, let's see what the harvester costs are here. Fifty-eight three ninety-eight. And the base price is 35.5. Okay. So let's check the journal. And search for harvester. Or harvester four. Okay, so Void Raiders where we are now, and Crystallis in February. So well I will target that right up front. But now I'm gonna go. To here and look up Crystallis and look up Ore Harvester. Uh, this is just the market for. Oh, good. Okay. Am I supposed to be able to scroll down farther than that? Uh, that's unfortunate. That I don't think is intended. <laughs> I think it's supposed to keep going but it does not um but if it did we would be able to see what the price is at that location so uh we're just gonna awkwardly go over there and say hey how much do you charge um for a harvester for oh 
But yeah, if that worked, that would have been the ideal way to check to see if it was worth our time to come up here. But see now, okay, so now it's working. So I was in the station, I used the journal to connect me to Crystallis, and it is taking me there. So I bet you, you have to be in a station to target another station with GPS. That's probably the way it's set up. I don't know if that's intended, but that appears to be the way it is set up. Uh, would be nice with some interstellar Wi-Fi to check price. Yeah, it, it, it would. Um, yeah, it definitely would. Okay. There, there's, there's a trade-off um, in games like this between what makes for good gameplay and what makes for realistic um, com uh, commerce, right? So real, uh, realistic commerce would have two things happening. Two specific things. Um, one, if you're doing this kind of trading where you're buying and selling and buying and selling, realistic commerce would be optimized in the real universe, in the real world, to make it possible to know what the prices are everywhere at all times, especially post-internet, right? Post-1990 something. You would automatically know anywhere in the world how much something costs right pre-1990 something right back when uh okay so after the telephone you would just you would have to contact the the target location like you contact the, hey how much does it cost to sell something there uh and they would tell you or how much does it cost to buy or you'd, you'd be inter interacting with other merchants and so there's there's that before the telephone you'd basically just have to know right you'd have to kind of know based on what other traders have found and you know what, what other merchants are telling you and you would have to have conversations and so forth and you'd be able to build up a relatively current m trade map but it wouldn't be a hundred percent accurate and it would be behind the times right it would be like two weeks out of date always right but after the internet i mean you would just you would know instantaneously uh so that's the first thing that in a space sim with trade realistically we should know the prices everywhere even in places we haven't ever been to and that's the other thing is the fact that there are places that we haven't been to that we don't know the names of is unrealistic right because there's other people who've been there they should be able to tell us right the, the galactic map should be like google maps every inch of the universe should already have been mapped uh but it isn't right Gameplay wise on that first point that tends to be really freaking dull, right? It tends to be really dull game wise to Enter the game for the first time and immediately know where all of the stations are where all of the planets are where all the systems are What everybody's trading how much the prices are and having it be constantly updated every moment of every day while you're playing the game it it reduces gameplay by increasing realism so there is definitely a trade-off involved that i feel like you know there's probably a sweet spot i think astrock is pretty good at that sweet spot in the sense that you don't know the information until you go there and then once you go there you know the information and it's not updated instantaneously but it's reliable ish right and so you can get that information back and forth so that's useful um the, the second thing where you have a trade-off between realism and gameplay is that this kind of trade play where we buy stuff in a market, go to another market and sell it, buy stuff here, go and sell it there. Um, yes, the station data is updated after every time you visit. When you visit, the station data updates and then you leave and then you come back, it updates. So whenever you go there, it just pops up the new information. When you leave, if events change the prices, you won't know that information until you get there. Um, but yeah, so so this whole idea of buying and selling and buying and selling is pre-industrial, right? Realistically, nobody does this anymore. It's just not a thing. So no one in the real world these days uh, who are who are making significant profits and are not doing it under the table buys stuff from one company moves it across the country and sells it at another location. We just, we don't do that. What we do is we make contracts, right? So a shipper makes a contract with a supplier to ship stuff 
but we're not the the the, the shipper isn't paying for the commodities and then selling the commodities they're taking a contract to ship so that's what um well they were here the transport missions here that's how the real world works these days right this is post-industrial revolution right we don't normally see people buying and selling stuff unless they're doing it in smaller quantities or they are themselves both the um they're they're the, the merchant and the shipper in one um but usually those merchants are localized and it's, it's just not a thing that really happens um so this buying and selling thing is is fun for a game but it's not realistic right transport contracts are realistic um now i'm not complaining that this is a thing right but it just means that that there's that, that you're having to kind of undermine the realism in order to create gameplay satisfaction and 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 so the the fact that you're making that trade-off up front means that other trade-offs that you make are fine because the big one is already taken care of. You've already sort of done the big one, which is having this happen at all. Um, so I'm I'm comfortable with any kinds of other gameplay mitigations that are needed to make it fun, is if if this is the thing you're doing. Um, but it's also why I really like taking transport missions rather than doing trade loops because transport missions feel are more satisfying to me because they they kind of feed into my desire for immersion and realism uh what the heck was i doing anyway uh oh right we were gonna find out the harvesters here right oh it's worse <laughs> oh it's worse <laughs> oh no oh no it's worse so that means we're, we're just gonna have to stick our tail between our legs yeah all right we're gonna go buy it over there we're gonna we're gonna go to our journal we're gonna find where the harvesters are being sold we are in crystallis so we're gonna go to void raiders and just pay his predatory prices mm. yes yeah, so transport contracts are like hauling jobs in elite dangerous yes you get the goods and a delivery destination there are three um there, there are two kinds of transport missions in Astrox. There's the actual ones called a transport mission, where the items are already in a station. You have to go pick them up and then deliver them to another one. And then there's also a source, uh, a, a source and transport mission where you have to go buy the items and then go sell them somewhere else. But it's a specific item set that you're told to do. Um, and that's basically what I call the the lazy merchant missions, where the merchant just like doesn't want to take the time to buy the stuff and get them in storage and then get a transporter. They just make you do it, right? Um, but uh, here we go. Here's one. So take a look at this here on this contract, uh, left side. Transport a light shipment of 101 circuit board documents from Value Star to Imperium Publica. So we'll actually go. We'll do that. This one, actually, the carbon filters, we, we, I don't know if we have the space for the circuit boards. We must. They're documents only. Uh, but this one gives us more money. So we're going we're to do this anyway. We're going to do this transport light shipment from Void Raiders over to Imperium Publica. So when I accept this one, transport missions require a visit to the station storage to retrieve the goods for transport. So I accept that one. And because I'm in the station where I have to pick up, you can see immediately here, in storage, the carbon filters appear in my storage. So I just need to do this. So now they're in here, and then I need to take them to Becky, to the Imperium Republica, from, from Becky to Imperium Republica. So we're gonna do that next, after we have um, paid this guy's just absolutely insane markup price for, uh, oh no, I forgot. There's a surety. I forgot there's a surety. We have to, um, uh, there's the insurance. Well, like, in order to make sure that we're not just going to cut and run <laughs> with the carbon filters, we have to actually put down a bond. So that's what we have done. We've um, we've put down a bond for for the carbon filters. Um, so on this one, for example, um, there's an insurance deposit that you have to do, and I and I had to do that with this one as well. So we, uh, we're gonna, uh, whoopsie, yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to go do this first. Oh, man. Uh, 
let it never be said I play games efficiently. Um, so we're gonna go here. Oh no 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 no! That's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it the way that that I think we should be able to do it. Uh, we're gonna go to here. All right. So that should warp us out and then and then autopilot us to the station. And then we're gonna have to come all the way back here to get the ore harvester for. But yeah, so so the transport missions basically uh, no, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? That's got to be a glitch. It's got to be a bug. Um, maybe because I already had a GPS set. Maybe I'd have to clear it first. I don't know. There, yeah, there's something there's something not correctly overriding something to make it work correctly. But um, but yeah, so so yeah, you, for these transport missions, you have to put down a bond so that uh, that the 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 person contracting you has confidence that you're not just going to run off with his stuff. Because you, you could, right? You, you literally could, in this game, just literally take the filters and then just go sell them. And that would be a cheat, right? It would, it would be an easy way to cheat because you, if you don't mind the rep hit from failing the mission, if you don't care, you could just get free carbon filters, right? Um, but in order to prevent that, you actually have to pay a bond. Which again is realism. That's exactly right. Like, but normally and realist, realistically, we would have insurance. We'd be paying an insurance premium for that. But you know, it's fine. So we have received. Uh oh, it, I lost my thing. Uh, we have received the thing, and it said it. We it, we got our money back basically. So now we're back up to two twenty seven. Um, do we have missions here? No missions here. Okay. So we're gonna go back to where we wanted to be in the first place. Um, we want to go back to. Oh no, can I only do it from here? Let's find out. Maybe I can only do it from here, from the search. I hope not. I hope I can do it from here. No, we cannot. Okay, that must have been what happened to me there before. When I clicked on this, I thought it was giving me GPS to that. Okay, so at the very least we know that it only happens from the search screen. I do think it should happen from here. Uh, I would rec I would suggest to Momo that we have the ability to GPS from here, but at the very least we can GPS from here. So we're gonna do or harvester four, yeah, and there we go. What the heck is that? That's some weird caterpillar transport ship. That's freaky. I don't like it. That makes me feel things I don't like. It looks weird. All right, here we go. Now we're gonna go buy our oral harvesters. We should be able to buy two of them because they were only at 59K roughly and we have more than that amount. And we should be able to buy two. Yeah, and here it works, there it works. We, we can definitely get it to work from the search, from, from the search page. Okay, so check checkbox on that one. All right, so we're getting the harvester or harvester four, and we want two of those because we have two slots uh, that I want to do. Okay, done. Now to the garage, get rid of these, put these in place. There we go, and then sell those. We don't get a lot, but that's okay. Done. All right, do we have any missions here? Yes, okay. So we have a transport, we have that transport mission, and then we have a Gradion Harvester mission. We're gonna do both, right? I think I have, uh, yeah, I did get the thing where I can do both. So we'll do this one, and then that one. All right, now let's see what's our what's our most, most efficient route. So we have to go from Kinmatim to Ubel, and this one is from Jogor to Becky. So they're crisscrossed, they're not really gonna, um, so this one starts here and ends here. So the harvest, okay, so we, oh gosh, but that's, heh, that's actually one, two, three. This other one uh, doesn't show up. Uh, the, the mission information only picks up, I think, the last mission you took, which is unfortunate. It, what I would like it to do is for, to flip. When I switch missions in my board over here, it should, it, I would like it to flip, but it doesn't. Um, so this is going from Value Star in Kinmatim, which is 
over here to you bay you bell okay so it really doesn't matter which one we do first so let's do oh, oh. let's do the ore mission the harvester fit first because we have the fancy new um beams let's do that i do not have the why do not oh because i haven't been there yet that's why all right so i can only go here All right, so I've been streaming for about two hours, 45 minutes of which was only a quarter of the screen. So I'll probably go for another 30 minutes uh, and then uh, end it there and then uh, possibly pick up again on another day, maybe sometime this weekend. Um, but yeah, so it is what now? It's now 11.13 my time, so I'll go to about 11.45 my time. Uh, so what am I doing? Uh, oh yeah, we got to harvest. Harvest, harvest, harvest. Harvest. No, I'm not. <laughs> no. Yes, Kevin, you're paying attention. Uh, we still need to go to this guy over here. So we need to find. Yeah, there's the gate. There we go. Hit Q for a passive scan. Is there anything fun over here? looks like oh yeah we are in um yep we're in a node zone okay good okay so let's uh oh i got my maximum targets let's uh close those out let's look at that one let's look at that one let's look at that one yeah this is great one two three and then that one yeah, have to boot this up again. So many get yeah, and and the thing is, I honestly I was waiting on this. I was waiting until the the uh, until this update dropped. Uh, I have been uh, I've been yeah I've been waiting on this one. Uh, I I've been wanting to stream it. I've been wanting to do record a series on it. Um, and I just literally just been waiting until until this uh, because uh, I knew this was going to just be a radical update, and that's good. So what the heck? Oh, I've, okay, that's why that's doing it. It does this little glowy, glowy, glowy thing, and I don't know why that one's being weird over there. Why that glowy, glowy's being weird. <laughs> it's kind of funky. It's different from that one, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's... it's uh, Yeah, I it's... The thing for me with this game, what I like about this game is, especially just because of the way I play it, uh, oh, I should I should preface the same with that. I, I play a bunch of space games, right? I play X4 Foundations most of all. I play Ulit... Um, and I play Evacron Legacy, uh, and I play this, um, and this game is so chill. The, even, even combat is relatively chill that I, um, I, I love the fact that I can just kind of do my thing and, and, and not really stress about things with this game. It, it is... I mean, even the music is super chill. It's just, it makes me, it makes me happy to play this game. And I can kind of, you know, watch a video and, you know, uh, chat on Discord or whatever while I'm playing it and not, not feel like I'm missing anything. Um, just because it's just such a, a, a such an, uh, an easy, calm game to play. I love it. Uh, where am I going? I'm going back to Becky. Yeah, I have to go back to Becky. All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Maybe? Okay, all right. We're going to try this test. Okay, I, I think I may have already determined that I'm wrong about this, but if I just do from here, go to Void Raiders, can I go from the search screen, regardless of what I'm searching for, if I find that station in that list of whatever I'm searching arbitrarily, I wonder if that will let me link directly to that station. Okay, so uh, I uh, I said at the, at the very start of this, uh, and I'll say it again, I am not a professional YouTuber or streamer. I am not looking to become a professional. I have absolutely no interest in, you know, getting subscribers and, you know, getting advertising money. None of that. I don't care. So understand that when I say this. This is not me self-promoting in any way that really is meaningful. 
Um, but I do have a YouTube channel, uh, Archivist X, where I do Let's Play Poorlies. <laughs> That's what I call them because I play poorly. And uh, I play a bunch of these space games. I do Elite, I do Evercon Legacy, uh, and I plan to do an Astrox um, uh, series. My goal on the YouTube stuff is really to kind of advertise the game because most of the games that I play don't really have a lot of stuff on YouTube. Oh, you did. You you uh, subbed at the YouTube. Uh, excellent. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you. I, I, that's a weird thing to say because, like I said, I don't really, I don't have uh, a goal in mind to, to sort of promote myself. It's more to be like I want people to experience these games to make a decision, hey, this looks great. I want to buy it. I want to try it or I want to boot it up again. I haven't tried it in a while, but this makes me excited. That's really my intent is to is to surface games that don't get a lot of attention on YouTube um, and, and give them some meat that people can be like, yes, I can, I can chew on that. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of why I did that. The Evercrime Legacy, uh, yeah, thank you for, for that, for, uh, for, uh, saying that you like the Evercrime videos. I, uh, I really love that game. Uh, it's, it's so much fun. Um, and uh, it's hard. It's hard to, uh, to fight, hard to, hard to do stuff. Um, and I might do an X4, uh, that's kind of lower on my list because there are a lot of uh, X4 Foundations uh, videos out there. So again, like since my, my goal is really to kind of surface games that don't get a lot of play on YouTube, um, that's not necessarily one of the ones that I'm uh, super clamoring to do. But this is one. Uh, so I'm going to be posting this video up as, as, as one of my stream, Astro stream videos. But I'm also probably going to do a series of this in 30 minute chunks um, of just kind of just going through in my, my Let's Play Poorly. Uh, okay, what was I doing? I gotta have the attention span of a gnat. Uh, oh, I did it! I did it! I, I made the money. Uh, I did the ore thing. Um, all right, so we got Gradion. We're gonna sell that. 8k. Meh. Okay. We we do know that the refining doesn't really get us much. Um, probably mu nearly any station. Uh, okay. So light shipment of 101 circuit boards. We we have to go c collect the circuit boards at Value Star in Kinmatim. Oh oh oh! That was the thing. Um, we did determine that if you do from the search, regardless of whether you're in space or at a station, if you use the search to um, to create your GPS uh, um, setup, you will go to the station. So let me see if I can search for value. No, it doesn't let you search for the station itself, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to do, I'm going to search for uh, Arv. Maybe I can find value star in here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so Momo, if you're watching this, if you do see this, or, and I will mention it on Discord, we definitely want to be able to GPS from the station list in your journal. 100%. Not only is it really good to do, it's also expected behavior given that you can do that from search. Really do want that. Um, okay. Toodling along. Have you, um, uh, Devil, have you played uh, Evercron? Uh, or is it something you've just watched? Yay, we made it to Valley Star. Okay, circuit boards. Oh, good, we have we have room. Oh, we have all Chris's documents. How much space? It, it took, oh, I took about 100, okay. You have played Evercron recently, but okay, cool. Have you played Arvok Alliance? Have you played the uh, Free Space 2 type version of, of that universe? Um, Arvok Alliance is like a campaign style, mission by mission uh, combat sim. Yeah, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. If you like a combat, combat in Evercron, uh, then Ever Arvok is just, it's just a series of sequence of missions. If you've ever played Free Space 2 or uh, uh, Wing Commander, or anything like that. It's 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 that kind of a game. Uh, I may end up doing some videos on that one as well. That is a, a heck of a lot of fun. But I am absolutely atrocious at it. Absolutely mind-bogglingly bad at that game. Um, but I love it. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we need to go to Imperium Republic. Okay, so let's uh, let's 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 see if we can uh, do three for three here. Uh, Imperium, there's one. They've got it. There we 
go. All right. Go to you, Bell. Yeah, Arvok, uh, Arvok uh, Legacy, uh, oh, sorry, Evacron Legacy, Arvok Alliance, um, Ulit, X4 Foundations, um, Astrox, gosh, what else am I playing um, cockpit-wise? Um, I do play a little bit of Elite Dangerous. I am not a super fan of that game. It's just, it is, there's too much flying and nothingness. Um, and there's too much of a grind in the early time, and I, so I, 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 I keep bouncing off of it. Um, but it is, uh, you know, but it, but it, but it's really pretty, and I do appreciate what it's going for. It's just it's not something that I can, I have the attention span for. Um, and the other games that I've been playing recently are House of the Dying Sun, which is another like combat-centered game, uh, and Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, uh, which is sort of like, um, like. Uh, like an Evercron kind of or X4 kind of thing, but in a very Firefly kind of Wild West type environment. That's a lot of fun. Uh, you can't even play it properly due to Odyssey increased system requirements. Yeah, I don't even have Odyssey. I I, I never bothered. I, I stuck to uh, Horizons because um, my understanding from uh, uh, Odyssey is that it's just it's janky as hell. Uh, and I was like, no, I'm not interested. And I, I don't really need a first person shooter in my space game. I don't. That's not why I play. I play to be in a cockpit, so Odyssey doesn't really appeal to me that much. Um, and in you know, like Star Citizen, I I, I have it. I had I just bought a forty dollar pack on that, and I can't play it. My computer is so eh, it doesn't. It's a slideshow, and I keep falling through the through the uh, the floor, and I die. And it's just it's not that's not happening for me for the next couple of years. Um, but every once in a while, I do go back to Elite, Dangerous, uh, Horizons, and, and tool around. But yeah, House of the Dying Sun. Yeah, that is good. It's very stylized, and it's a lot of fun. It's like uh, it, it oozes style, and that is part of what makes it uh, so nice for me. It's just like, yeah, I, I understand what environment I'm in. I'm in a game by somebody who knew what they wanted in the experience. Like, they created an experience that I really love. Same thing with Astrox. Like, this game is just it just oozes with a with style as sort of it's very style forward like he's very he's very much and you know it has a lot to do with the fact that he writes his own music like all of his music is he's, he's made it. he's not contracted out for that like he knows what he wants momo knows what he wants and he makes it and so it, it's all it, it's just yeah the style of this game is glorious um okay so we did that mission we so we did the transport and it, it did that we are now at 257 uh, so do we do we even want lasers? I mean, do uh, I'm not I haven't fought anybody yet. We could do another harvest job. Um, let's take a look at what the shipyard has here. Um, let's see. I wish I could sort by price, that sort of thing. Um, last wagon. Oh, look at that guy. That's a big ass battle cruiser though. It's really pretty. Look at that. Oh, oh no. Okay, they're gonna need to, they're gonna need to, to fix the rotation methods. Uh, there's some gimbal lock problems going on here. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's, that's funny. Uh, okay, I mean, I don't, it's fine. You can, you can, re you can get it to reset. It's just like, you gotta, gotta wiggle it around a little bit. Um, and then this shuttle, ooh. I have a feeling that this might have been from. Uh, I may have accidentally left one of my um, mo one of the ship mods in there because I don't I don't know if that's um, I don't know if that's base game. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, that's funny. I'll, I'll have to remember to take those out uh, when I do my uh, uh, my my series because I've got to make sure they're not in there because they're definitely not not functional. Um, yeah, the shuttle does have. A lot of cargo. I mean, it basically. I mean, look at that thing. It's basically a cockpit and a bunch of cargo pods. Like, if that thing didn't have cargo space, I'd I'd be very disappointed. Um, this guy though's got twelve thousand cargo space. 
these support guys are all expensive. Yep, ATC. Yeah, that's a mod. Ah, dang it. Yep, that's the mod, I think. And these, this is going to be... Pretty sure this is a mod. Um, and, it, and it's going to be all all sorts of goofed up if I um, if I use something like this uh, because it's definitely not been uh, updated. And I think the textures are a little different or something. I don't know. It looks so pretty. I don't know. Uh, I'll have to look into that. Um, definitely have to check to remove those before I do my uh, series. Assault. Oh, it's a utility ship. It's got a little bit more space than my base level. That looks cute. Looks almost like... Um, you know what that looks like? It kind of reminds me of a Robotech fighter. Have I made... No, I did not make those. I don't... I, <laughs> no. Um, but there, there are some... There are some ship mods on Nexus. Uh, they are now, as of this update, pretty much all out of date. Um, but uh, but I know that there are some modders who are going to be updating their stuff and making some new ones. But there were some really fancy ones on on Nexus that you could download and and put in and, and in your game. They're so good. Um, a lot of the art, like they updated the textures and stuff, and they made them look really achingly beautiful. This looks like a Robotech ship, like a Macross ship almost. Uh, and there's a pirate escort. Look at that guy. Well, that's very sleek. This is sort of like the kind of ship that I would be able to make and no better than that. Like, I, that's like, yeah, I can do that and be done. That's it. Uh, excavators. These are all really expensive. Yeah, that's another HC. Okay, so you can you can tell that these are the modded ones simply because the the textures are, um, are very different. Uh, and these were custom textures that that modder created. Uh, for these ships and just look at that I mean that these are really good textures this is another one of those really lots of cargo space guys look at that thing that is just cargo all the way down um, and then this is one of the base game ships yeah 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 the modder who did this is just knocking them out of the park and I can't wait to see his updates because he's very attentive to the detail of what it would look like if it was the kind of ship he's making, right? He's making a minor salvager drone ship that's an excavation style cruiser. So it's the right size, it's the right shape, and it's got the right look of the kinds of quote unquote modules it would have, right? Not, not passive active modules, but like cargo spaces. So it's just, they're very well done. I'm very, very impressed with his stuff. No fabricators here, no battleships. Oh, and there's another one, right? This is another one of those uh, modded ones. Look at this. This is a dreadnought. And just look, look at all of the bits. Like, he just put so many bits on here. Look at that. So many bits. It, it's got that, like, Star Wars, 1970s Star Wars, I've made a model out of materials look to it. Um, and it's, yeah, dang, right? Like, that. look at that thing. I love it. Now, these are good. These The base ships are nice. They are very sleek. And uh, and, I, and I like the way they look. But, I mean, but man, this guy's an artist. This is just... These... Okay, here's what I would say. This is what I would say about these ships. The look of these ships matches the, the style of the stations that already exist in the game, right? Those stations, the, the modules of the stations, it's like they look really nice. The guy who made ATC, um, just, wow. He just just knows Astrox. Like, this is just brilliant. I can't stop looking at them. Oh, they're so good. Um, but we can't afford a single one, right? We can't afford any of them. So we're just going to be tooling around this little guy a little bit longer. Uh, so let's do some uh, Atomite harvesting. we got to go to... Ifetage, Zenodoron, oh, and back to that guy, whatever that is. So let's see. We need to go to. Oh, right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the updates on those on those mods. Uh, the ship mods and yeah I would check out Nexus even though you couldn't necessarily use those mods now um, but you can see kind of what what people are doing um, have you have you done any uh, ship design in the editor there we go all 
Oops. Because I've, tr I've tried using the ship editor myself a bit. And I'm just not really super competent at it. I, I'm going to definitely try more uh, down the road. But um, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating what, what you can do. Like, there's so many pieces and parts that you can like tinker with and uh, make really good... Uh, Really, I mean, obviously we saw those really, really gorgeous looking ships. Um, the one thing I, that I would like to see happen um, in the future is for the modules and the pieces, the ship pieces, to have a direct relationship to the stats of the ship. Right now, and I understand why it is this way right now, um, right now there are no, uh, there's no relationship between um, the... Uh, between the stats and the and the ship uh, visuals, um, so for example, I could make a battle cruiser with a huge amount of cargo and all this, like a whole bunch of other stuff, and have it be as tiny as this one, and the game would let me do it. And I think that there should be some um, guardrails in place, really, uh, that prevent that le that kind of disparity between the visual and the um, and the gameplay mechanics, um, and uh, and that would that would make it a lot easier, I think, for me to feel confident that I'm making a ship that matches what my goal design my design goals are. Yeah, it, it is complicated. Uh, yeah, gee, was it complicated? Yeah, it it is a little complicated. It does take some getting used to. Um, and uh, yeah, and I haven't gotten used to it. Now, like I said, I haven't really. I, I did a couple of test runs, and I was like, you know what? I don't really know what I'm doing here, so I'll leave it to the experts. Uh, okay, we got some money. Let's take a look at our stats for our uh, our faction stats. Extractor still at five. Missionary. Okay, so we're getting a lot of outlaw because we've been going, kind of staying in the outlaw systems. Um, so that's uh, that's going to help us with some things. I think with with um, pricing and possibly mission access. So Chrysalis is a missionary. Uh, do they have no? They don't have any missions for me. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can do some trade. No, we, we definitely want to sell our adamant ore, adamant ore, because that's crap. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. So what are the supplies? What do we got for supply? Okay. So we can oversee on the right hand side what the discounts are. Oh, I like that their color. The color changes. So. 45% is bright green, 29% is dark green, 5% is just white. Okay, that is that is super, super helpful. Okay, so advanced cargo expansion has a 45% off selling price of 11 point, uh, 11,000, basically 11,900. Uh, 11, so we know that. Advanced cargo expansion, let me see if anybody is selling that. Or buying that. Where are we? We're here. So we're in uh, Crystalis. So that's this one. Okay, so Advanced Cargo is also in Value Star. So let's take a look at Value Star. Advanced Cargo Expansion at 32k. <gasps> Wait a minute. Again, I have the memory of a gnat. Is 32k higher than what the sell price was here? Yes, by a ridiculous amount. Holy moly, I'm buying seven of them. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's do this. Okay. I'm liking this. I am liking this because this this is the trade gameplay that I have been waiting for. Being able to get that information in an easily accessible way so that you can make decisions without having to, like, just guess. Because previously what I was running into, and again, this is mar largely down to the improvements in the UI, not so much in changes in gameplay because this was kind of available in previous builds. Uh, but what I was running into before was that I, would, I could buy stuff, but I didn't know how valuable how worthwhile it was to buy it anywhere and I didn't know how worthwhile it was to sell it anywhere like I just couldn't just I couldn't figure out is this a valid trade run if I buy it here where the heck do I sell it um, okay so station buy price is 20k per 
Um, and that is below what it was before. Something, something, ED. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, this is below what it was before. I imagine that there have been some events to change the price. The, the price that I saw before in the search list was my the previously recorded price from the last time I'd been in the market at Value Star, which again, that's a gameplay decision. It's unrealistic, It's a, but it's a gameplay decision that I like. I like that you have to collect data yourself. Like if that's the way the gameplay is gonna be, great, because it's not egregious. It does, it does sort of uh, encourage you to explore. It encourages you to kind of touch base with all of your potential uh, customers. Um, I love it. Okay. And then there's tax. And tax is related to, the, the tax level is related to um, my faction rating, I believe. I believe my faction rating goes up, the tax level goes down. So, we're going to sell it. Look at that. 363. Oh, we are doing fancy times. Okay. Let's do one more run and then call it for the day. Uh, let's see here. What can we do? What are we, what are we, uh, what are we supplying here at Value Star? Here at Value Star, we supply many things. I want to find the best discount. There was a 50, 51, large heat sinks. Those are cheap. He's got only got 39 of those though. There's only 49 of those. We need something at a at a decent price. That was 666.9. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. And that's 51% off. Okay. Let's do that. Well, no. First we want to see if there's anybody buying those. Basic scan emitter. That's what we're looking for. Money, money, money. 100%. All right. Basic scan emitter. Dang, we don't know of any stations that are buying it. That that have it as a commodity. So I want to test something. I want to test what will happen if I try to... Um, oh, is that... Yeah, you know what? That's not what I wanted to do. All right, let, let's try two things. I want to check, check, just randomly check the station. Basic scan emitter. Does it even show up in the market? It does not, not there. So yeah, so that what that's telling me basically is that th the market doesn't even have this stuff at these other stations that have we been to. Um, so what? I, but I, what I do, I, I do want to do a test though. What I want to test before I go is uh, buy a basic scan emitter, buy buy a bunch of these. I'm 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 willing to sacrifice 32k on on, on this test. All right, 32.6. I want to see what happens if I try to sell just to somebody else randomly who doesn't um, who doesn't have it in their market. Because I want to see how if if we can still make a profit by like basically ramming it down their throats, just force selling. Will they even take it? Will there be a massive a price drop because they don't want it, right? Like I know that Astrox does have an op, it does kind of have those pops up where it says, we really don't want this here. You're not gonna get a lot of money for it. And I want, I want to see if that, if, if that's a valid, if that, that happens, if, if, the, um, if the search um, is telling me what I want to know, like which is to say, if I don't see it in the search, should I just not touch it, right? Or can I touch it, but just expect a, a, a minimal, minimal, um, uh, minimal return? Because it might be worth it to like buy it if I'm going, if I'm on my way to a, a, a zone anyway, right? It may be worth it, but if it's not, I, I want to know, and, I, and this will uh, this will help me know like how how it calculates uh, commodity prices when there is no c commodity in the market. Um, and then uh, once we've done that, we will. Uh, close out the stream. All right, market. Let's see what we got here. Okay, excellent. Here we go. 
This item is not currently stocked at the station. The station will buy this item at a reduced price and it will be refined for materials and components. It will not be offered for sale on the market. It cannot be repurchased if you choose to sell it here. And we are gonna take a hit of about 8K. Brilliant. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Either way, I wanted to know what it was. So what we know now is that this market just does not have this item in its interest. Like it just, And so when we do a search, and we don't find this station in that list, it's because they don't want it. They don't want anything to do with it. When you buy it, when they, when they buy it, they're gonna stick their nose up at it and say that something smells bad and they're gonna refine it, get rid of it, get it out of their sight. Excellent. That's exactly what I wanted to know. So now we know that that is also what we're being told by the search is that if it's not, if the station, if there's a station that's not in the list, it doesn't want it. And it's, and they're not gonna give you a lot of money and you're never going to see it again. Yeah, so if they're not interested in the product, they will just salvage whatever for scraps, exactly. I don't, I, I know for sure that that is something that was done in the last, with sometime in the last couple of updates. I, I remember seeing that sometime in the last couple of updates, but it wasn't this way like a year ago. And I'm really, really appreciative of this change because it does mean that you have to be a lot more strategic and attentive to your trade routes. So that makes me really happy. So uh, since uh, we're going to leave it at that, um, and yeah, th thanks for watching. Thanks for asking your questions. I'm, I'm glad that I was able to give you some info that you didn't have before about certain things. And um, yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to stream this again at some point in the near future. And uh, if you celebrate the holidays, I uh, hope you have a good one. Thanks for watching. Take care.